Well, thank you very much and hello again. I would like to start off with a few sort of practical hints about how we're going to run this session. Um, because um, it will be about tools and procedures, tools, the memorandum of understanding, the learning agreement, the uh, transcript of records, and the procedures, assessment, validation, um, and uh, recognition. Uh, I will speak for about 20 to 25 minutes just to give an introduction, and there will be interpretation. Um, after that, we, Dutch and I will briefly hand out and present some, some completed documents, some examples of uh, completed documents, just for, to give you some kind of inspiration or something. Then we will break for working groups, and we will have two groups, because you need to discuss as well. We don't want you to fall asleep. Um, and um, I can see you very conveniently. You've already formed two groups, one here and one there. So this is simply what, what we'll do. Uh, group one, group two. Um, and uh, we would like you to discuss some issues about um, the, um, um, the, the documentation. And uh, Dachi will present, give you some questions. The first thing you should discuss, however, is um, you need to appoint one of you just to give a brief summary at the end of the, dis your discussion uh, of what you've been di discussing about. Only one, two minutes, not more. And for that, we will need interpretation as well. Um, otherwise, you can speak. It will be in Latvian, uh, so I won't be able to participate. I'll sit here, look pretty, do my best anyway. And if you have anything that you, where you require my intervention, some kind, just uh, talk to me. Um, yeah, and 20, 25 minutes presentations, 45 minutes uh, working group, and then we will have a final discussion, feedback session of about 20 minutes or something like that, or whatever time we have available. And for that, there will be interpretation as well. Is everybody in agreement with that? Well, there's not a lot you can do anyway, but uh, I just wanted to ask. Um, ECMA tools and procedures. Um, let me save time and jump straight into it. Um, when you look at the actual recommendation, the text from 2009 in terms of procedures, it um, mentions three procedures. Uh, it mentions the procedure of assessment, which is the act of determining whether the agreed learning outcomes have been achieved or not. There's validation, uh, the process by which uh, the sending institution confirms that the assessment met their needs and expectations, that the uh, participants have actually uh, learned, have acquired the learning outcomes that was uh, in the agreement, that was agreed beforehand. And then finally, a, um, a process of recognition, which is the formal process where you actually get the stamp of the competent authority. Could be the ministry, some people have qualification authorities, uh, and in some cases it's the same people that it's the school that, that have the uh, uh, responsibility for doing the, or the, the they have the, 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 the right to do the, the recognition as well. So these are the three processes, uh, pr procedures in, in, in ECVET. And um, I think what is most interesting in this respect is assessment. I could see that you had, uh, some of you had sent in some questions before the, uh, this uh, event, where you had asked some questions, and assessment figured in quite a few of these questions. How do you do assessment, and who does assessment? And I think it's important in an ECBAT context that you shouldn't do assessment in uh, both the uh, both in both the hosting and the sending organization it's part of the memorandum of understanding that you agree on who does the the assessment so that it's only done once so that you don't have students participants having to do two tests and um, you can also in the memorandum of understanding you can agree on what kind of assessment you should have. 
And you're basically, basically you have two kinds of assessment. You have the so-called summative assessment, which is quite simply a test, either oral or written or practical, at the end of the stay abroad, where you check whether the outcomes have been, the learning outcomes, the planned learning outcomes or the objectives have been achieved or not. Or you can have a so-called formative assessment, which is usually where somebody is following the participant um, during the stay, and at the end of the stay then confirms by his or her signature that the learning outcomes have been achieved. That's basically the two forms of assessment there are, and there's nothing in uh, that prevents you from making a combination of the two. It's just sort of, if you like, uh, a, um, an a analytical distinction between the two types of tests. And um, I think most of the projects, at least from a Danish perspective, they are the ones that, that I, I deal with on a practical level, they use the last part. They use formative assessment and one of the reasons is that uh, most projects they are organized as placements in enterprises abroad uh, and it would not be really be feasible to organize tests as such. So they do, they have somebody from the enterprise following the participant who at the end of the stay will then confirm yes the learning objectives, the learning outcomes have been achieved or they have not been achieved or they have only been partially achieved and then they issue the so-called transcript of records and that then is used as a background for the validation and recognition procedures. And there's really not a lot in the recommendation about how you do these things. So you have a sort of some leeway in determining how you're going to do that at national level. But of course there's nothing that prevents, for instance, the ministry, the national ministry from saying we want it done in that way and not that way. But it's up to national level how you do it. Uh, in Denmark it's entirely up to the schools how they're going to organize this. So they have complete control over these three procedures and they do it in the way they think it's most fitting for the target group and for the qualification and for the nature of the project. Um, when you do these uh, uh, proceed, when you perform these procedures, I already did mention that in, during my initial presentation, that uh, first you do the assessment, validation, and then recognition. With the assessment, it's very, very important that you, in the memorandum of understanding, or in another document, that you that you agree on who does the assessment and what kind of assessment is going to be done, so that there's no doubt about that, so that you don't stand at the end of the project and say, how do will we actually know whether the uh, learning outcomes that we plan have been achieved or not? You need to uh, do that from the beginning. Validation. Um, who's in charge of validation? It is normally the, the school who will look at it and say, um, we, would, we, we, we agree that these learning outcomes that have been achieved, they can actually, they are actually form part of the qualification that the participant is, is pursuing. How is validation done? It's usually by looking at it's the transcript of records, come back to that in a moment, uh, and on the basis of that, uh, determining whether this is actually the case, that it, that it, it's, it can fit into the qualification. About recognition, the third step, um, I would like to make a distinction here between recognition and documentation. Because documentation is part of recognition. You need to document what is, has been the learning outcomes that have been achieved, and you do that with a transcript of record. And you can actually document any kind of learning outcomes, but with a recognition procedure, 
It means that you recognize the learning outcomes that fit into a particular qualification. And I think we did mention that in the discussions on the way that very often when people, they go abroad, when participants, they go abroad, they learn things that are actually over and beyond what is in the curriculum. And of course, these can, sometimes they can be recognized because you have usually in, in most curricula or syllabus, you have a sort of 10% or something that, that where the individual can, can choose, uh, where you have some kind of, 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 of uh, space for uh, making sort of personal choices about which kind of things they want to, want to follow. But very often it's outside of the qualifications and there these you can't recognize in the framework of that particular uh, qualification. But it's very important that they're documented nevertheless. Because they can be important when the, when the individual, when the participant later goes out on the labor market and they can document that I don't only have that qualification but I have also something beyond that. Could for instance be foreign language proficiency but it could also be something that's related to the vocational or professional activity. So uh, it's important not just to look at what is in the requirements for the qualification but also to document what lies outside of that. Then we come to the tools that are foreseen in the recommendation. There is the memorandum of understanding which is between the partners of the project where all the practical details are arranged. Uh, what is this about? When is it going to take place? Who is in charge of assessment? Uh, how is assessment done? And issues like that. And there is at European level, and that also goes for the learning agreement, there is a, a um, European template, I'll come back to that in a moment, which you can use as some kind of, well, shopping list or something like in the sense that this shows what other people they have put into their memorandum of understanding and this is something that you need at least to reflect about when you fill in your, your memorandum of understanding. And you have the learning agreement and the transcript of records or personal uh, transcript. The memorandum of understanding, I already did mention that, it formalizes the commitment between the so-called competent <coughs> bodies, the partners of the project, clarifies the role, it ensures that learning outcomes are documented, and you will have a template that's developed in a European context that you can use. If, um, and it looks like this. Most of you will probably know it already. It's available from the web, the Europe web website, the European, the ECWAT toolkit, where you can find this, uh, this memorandum of understanding. In a moment, uh, you will be given a, an, a, a copy of one that has been filled in to see how this has been, been done in practice. Then you have the learning agreement. And the difference between the learning agreement and the memorandum of understanding is first and foremost that the learning agreement describes in detail what learning outcomes are, are to be achieved. And the learning agreement is individual to each participant in principle. Maybe you have a group that they're all going to learn the same, in which case you can have the same formulation. Or it may be that they are learning there at different stages in their um, trajectory through the, uh, the, the program, so they will need different learning outcomes. So the learning outcome is always one that is individualized and it's signed by the sending and the hosting organization and the learner. And it's very important the learning agreement is something that should ensure that the learner also understands what this is about. Many, especially young people, they find it sometimes a bit difficult to 
they were all excited about having to go abroad. They tend to forget that this is not just going abroad like holiday. It's something that's about uh, acquiring some knowledge, skills, and competences. And they need to be aware. They need to, to be told what these, and they need to understand what these are, because otherwise they can't really act in accordance. They can't follow the learning process. The learning agreement also supports tracking and follow-up. You can always use, refer to the learning agreement during the stay to see are we moving in the right direction and you can see afterwards have we, are these, are these, have, have these been achieved. Creates transparency and learner reassurance and again you have a template, a European template that has been developed which you can take and use and they are again it's available from the European the uh, ECVET toolkit website where you can find this. Then finally the transcript of records and I already did I think mention that even though the recommendation <laughs> mentioned that an ECVET transcript of records should be developed we did not really do that because it was decided to use the Europass for that uh, um, particular purpose. So actually most, if not all, projects when they, uh, when it comes to the transcript of record, they use Europass mobility. And I suppose you're all familiar with the Europass mobility. Otherwise it looks like this. You can see that it has a different logo than ECVET because it's not developed in an ECMET context, it's developed in the Europass uh, context. And the difference between the two is that Europass is about mobility in general, whereas ECMET is specifically about vocational education and training. But we use that in order to, to, um, to uh, 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 document learning outcomes. And I think I found a, a one that's is this actually Latvian? It is Latvian. Okay, good. <laughs> good. I'm pleased. Um, so th this this is an example of a of a uh, um, completed uh, transcript of record using Europarts in in Latvian. And if you want, sort of, and not just the templates that I've, I've mentioned. Um, but also the, some further information. You should use the web websites. There's the ecvettoolkits.eu, and there's also an older website that is no longer kept up to date, but which actually archives a lot of interesting material from ECVET development projects. It's called ecvetprojects.eu, and it stops at the end of 2014. But I still sometimes refer to it. I still sometimes use it when I need practical examples and I need material that was developed in, the, uh, earlier, in an earlier stage. And I should of course have, have, have added here as well the Europass website. You must do that in your own mind because if you want the transcript of records you have to go to the Europass website to get the Europass mobility. And that also has a lot of additional information material about how to go about it, also about how to write learning outcomes. <laughs>